pick a card, any card. Why? Come on, you know my thing about magicians. They're like mimes and tuxedos. Darling, indulge me. Pick a card. Now read it out loud. Mexico. Amy Gray, your exciting honeymoon adventure begins south of the border in Mexico with an incredible bicycle tour of the Yucatan Peninsula. And while sleeping under the stars isn't mandatory... Okay, I it get is... it. It's like a honeymoon lottery. What do you think? I think I'm not going to be riding a bicycle on my honeymoon. There's two more. Do either of them say 10 days on a beach doing absolutely nothing except ordering room service and reading trashy novels and sipping foamy drinks out of scooped out island fruit? No. But we could sip our foamy drinks after an exciting day of sea kayaking on the Great Barrier Reef. You're going to Australia? Hey, you. You're supposed to be asleep. Australia's like 12,000 miles away. Yeah, but they got phones there. Oh, yeah. Well, why do you have to go on a honeymoon anyway? Well, I guess I guess it's a it's a tradition that uh, after a wedding, uh, the husband and wife. Um... So you can have sex, right? What? Oh boy! You go away so you can have lots of sex. That's not entirely true. That's right. Sometimes there's kayaking. There's never kayaking. Go away. Go to Antarctica and have sex for two weeks. Honey, I don't really care. I'm gonna go to bed. Hey, come 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 back here. What just happened? You know what's amazing? Card number four, two weeks of sex in Antarctica. What? I think that's the winner. Not that smart. Are you looking for a new job? Don't tempt me, Sean. You've moved recently, haven't you? Twice in four years. Help me out. What does this mean? Two bedroom, two bath, cozy charm to spare. Cozy charm? That means the place is slightly larger than a shoebox. And uh, north facing terrace. Shoebox with a balcony. Well, that's what I thought. Why are you looking at real estate? Well, Amy's getting married next month, and. Uh, what, she and Stuart kicking you out? No one is kicking me out. It's time, that's all. Okay, let me help you. I used to date this realtor. She can get me the listings. It's much more up-to-date than this stuff. What's your price range? I don't know. Well, just give me a general ballpark. You do have a general ballpark. I imagine I do. I just don't know where it is. I'm meeting with Peter tomorrow, and I will ask him to direct me to my ballpark. Listen, there might be a, um, this is awkward, but, uh... Pick a sentence, Robert, any sentence. We'll continue this later. It's Kimberly. It always is. Greg and Stephen Goodman. Yeah, she got a message from the nurse at their school. The boys were bruised, they've been beaten up. Kimberly told me to go by their house and snatch the boys. Without even talking to the nurse? Yeah, how'd you know? Your Honor, if you're implying an ethics violation... I'm not implying anything, Miss Knox, except intense displeasure at what I read in the newspaper this morning. Let's read it together, shall we? The Connecticut woman who has accused football star Jason Darby of rape spent time in a psychiatric hospital six months before the incident, according to unnamed sources. Are you accusing me of leaking this story to the press? Well, I can't really see that it came from the prosecution side. It doesn't do much for his case. Your Honor, my client has a high profile. If he weren't a celebrity, this case wouldn't have even made it this far. Give me a break. Save it for the jury, Ms. Knox. My point is this case has gained national attention, which means newspapers and talk radio stations are being inundated with tips from unnamed sources. As long as you're not one of them. I assure you I'm not. And let me just say for the record, I resent the implication. 
Your resentment of this and all future implications has been noted, Ms. Knox. With all due respect, Your Honor, if our pre-existing relationship is going to be a problem here, I think you should consider recusing yourself. With all due respect, Counselor, we are acquaintances. We don't have a pre-existing relationship. And I will see you then. Emily, here's the thing. I need a decision, and I need it now. Stripes or solid blue? Who's the interview with? It's a bunch of stuffed shirts who are going to determine my future. I have to show them that I'm attending physician material. Definitely that one. Think so? It goes with your eyes. Solid blue it is. You get some rest, and I'll come back and check on you later. And whatever you do... I know. Stay away from the tapioca. Can you see my father in? Yeah. We're going to add another round of dialysis, and that should help. She's getting weaker. I can tell. Emily wants to see you. Hang in there, Mr. Gillen. Her creatinine and nitrogen levels are through the roof. I know. She's not going to make it through the weekend. Listen, she's first on the list. I've got Dr. Amos and the entire transplant team from Hopkins on standby. Until we get a kidney, there's nothing more you can do. I don't understand. Are there other reports that I'm not seeing? That's not enough for you? These boys are in here every other day. They have bruises, cuts, uh, black eyes. According to your file, all of those injuries were sustained here at school. Not all of them. Sometimes they get beaten up on the way home on the bus. But yes, usually it's here at recess or at lunch. I've seen it myself. The older boys gang up on them. You think it's the mother's fault these boys get beaten up? And she has turned them into targets. She isolates them from the kids and instructs them not to make friends. And then the way she dresses them. Every day they wear the same thing. These environmental jackets, they're supposed to be hypoallergenic or something. Kids can be mean. And these boys don't fight back. Have you seen them yet? Uh, no, but that will be my next stop. Their mother's not beating them up, but she might as well be. Jason Darby has lived the charmed life of a football hero. Ever since he was 15, he's been told he's better than the rest of us. Teachers, coaches, they all cut him breaks. Why? Because he's unstoppable on the football field. He's special. The rules that apply to everyone else don't apply to him. Shannon Elner made a mistake. She had the gall to say no to Jason Darby when he wanted to have sex with her. At which point, Jason Darby, who does not have to take no for an answer raped her repeatedly ladies and gentlemen of the jury give jason darby a message that the people of connecticut punish rapists no matter how rich and famous they are Ms. knox your turn this is not a complicated case there was no rape this was consensual sex when does consensual sex turn into allegations of rape? That's a $50 question. Take a look at Mr. Darby. He is rich, he is good looking, he is successful. He made it out of the inner city and look at him now. He is the American dream. His mansion has been splashed all over newspapers and magazines. His salary is public knowledge. What happened is this. Shannon Elner read the papers, and Shannon Elner decided she wanted a piece of that dream. How does she get it? She has consensual sex with Jason Darby, and a full two days later, walks into a police station and cries rape. 
Mr. Matthews, any idea how Shannon's civil suit is coming along? Excuse me? Objection, Your Honor. I'm not a witness. Sustained, Ms. Knox. Get away from the cameras and finish up. I've got 50 bucks that says Shannon Elner has already hired a private attorney who is in the process of filing a massive civil suit. Now, who wants to take that bet? Your Honor. Ms. Knox. You are finished. What are you doing here? I thought I'd surprise you. Take you out for ice cream or, uh... <laughs> Who's your next little friend? Hi, I'm Victor. Hi. Hi, I'm, I'm Lauren's mom. Mom, he heard me call you Ma. He knows who you are. Okay, take it easy. I'm just making chit-chat. Victor, come on. My crew's waiting. Nice to meet you. Catch you later, Elle. <laughs> oh, come on. We gave you a full name. It's a pretty name. It's six full letters. Why would you want to shorten it? I have three words for you. Affordable, luxury, retirement. And I have three words for you. Mom, don't let the retirement part throw you. It's just a marketing thing. Half the residents of these places still work. In terms of craftsmanship, these are the best apartment complexes on the market. And the perks, look at this one. They give you your own garden plot to tend. How efficient. You cultivate the land in the spring, and they bury you there in the fall. Okay, fine. You tell me what you had in mind. Well, I, I don't know. I want a little, little house with a yard and uh, nothing big. Maybe a porch. Sounds lovely. Of course, there's... Uh, no way you can afford that unless you make some changes, financial changes. Such as? Well, for one, you're going to have to clear out your savings, which means the money you made when you sold the house, zero out your credit card balance, and then um, you're going to have to sell Jared's diner. But the diner is a source of income, is it not? Mom, I keep the books. Believe me, it's a source of outgo. Why haven't you told me that before now? Well, when Jared was taking care of the finances, it didn't matter. It was pocket change to him. It's a house mortgage to you. He never said a word. Well, he probably didn't know. He didn't have to. He had a billion dollars. You don't. All right. Well, take a couple weeks and think about it, but sometime within the next month. I said all right. Let's do it now. Really? Are you sure? Peter, it's just a coffee shop, and it's costing me money. Let's sell it. I'll find a realtor. Last night, when Stu and I were in the living room and you came in, you seemed upset. So I guess I just wanted to make sure that you know what we're getting into. Who? You and Stu? No, you and me. I know you don't like to bring this up, and you've made it very clear in the past that you don't want me to get married again. What? I never said that. Actually, you did. I don't remember. Well, it, it doesn't matter. The, the point is that this marriage is happening, and it means changes for your life, too. Mom. Chill. Don't worry. I like Stu, okay? He's always really nice to me and he seems fine. For now. Um, that that's what I'm talking about. It's forever. That's the idea. And what about you and Dad? That was supposed to be forever, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, of course it was. 
And then it got all messed up. But I was younger then. I, I, I didn't know what I know now. I didn't have you. I just, I just want you to know that you and me, we're in this thing together. And it's going to work out, okay? I mean, look at what we've been through. We're tough. I don't want to be tough. I want you to promise that you're not going to mess up again. We're looking at 48 minutes, Doc. Still no respiratory effort and no spontaneous heartbeat. Give him two amps epi and sodium bicarb. We had that at the scene and in the ambulance. Give it to him again. We're losing him. I need atropine. Stop CPR. No rhythm. Start CPR. Another amp epi IV push. What's his status? He barely got a rhythm, no breath sounds, no brain function, and his pupils are pinned. For how many minutes? 49. Kyle, he's AP positive. Like Emily Gitlin. What do you want to do? How is he? I'm sorry. Gary's head injuries were too severe. Oh, God. We tried to revive him. We did everything we could, but oh. every test shows that his brain isn't functioning anymore. his helmet but he was in such a rush and he couldn't find it and I, I just let him go Mrs. Costin I need to speak with Gary's mother or father I, I, need, I need to speak with them now why? there is a young girl here who needs a transplant what? she's the same blood type as Gary but I can't do anything without parental permission I'm his legal guardian. Then I would like to ask you for that permission. No, I, I won't do that. Mrs. Costin, if you were the legal guardian, you... It could... doesn't matter. That's not my decision to make. I won't do that. You talk to my daughter. Where can I find her? <laughs> she lives with her boyfriend. Who are you? Maxine Gray with the Department of Children and Families. The government. The government sent you. Uh, well, one small underfunded but well-meaning corner of the government. You need to leave. No, Miss Goodman, I need to see your boys. Do you have a warrant? I can get one. And a couple of uniformed police officers to go with it. Fine. You can see them, and then you have to leave. What happened? A couple of older kids threw eggs at them when they got off the bus, and then they beat them up on the way into school. Which kids? It's always the same ones. They call us freaks. Okay, that's enough. Okay, you've seen them. Next person from the government better have a warrant. Special delivery for Dr. McCarty. Who the hell is that? That next of kin you wanted picked up, Erica Costin. This is the mother of the brain dead boy. Apparently a condition they share. Oh, any idea what she's on? Not a clue. The seat. Ms. Costin? Hello? Erica? Erica! Do you know where you are? Erica! We need to talk to you about your son. Erica? This is hopeless. I want you to talk to the grandmother and get her authorization. I don't care what you have to tell her. She won't do that without her daughter. She made that clear. Emily Gitlin's out of time, Kyle. Do you want to tell her parents we lost the perfect donor? 
Rapid detox. No, she's got to be in danger. Give her consent, and let's face it, she is neither. Unless, of course, that was a seizure. Come Kyle. on, we have pupillary meiosis, skin is clammy and hypothermic, possible endocarditis. Could be nothing, could be no D. What do you say, Dr. Redeker? We let this one go, you won't be able to go far enough away to forget it. I'm going to call it an OD. I need a bed and ICU. Rapid detox incoming. Shannon. Didn't you think that one o'clock in the morning was awfully late to be going to a man's hotel room? Yes, but he said he had to mate by tens of himself and that he would autograph one for my father. And what happened when you got to the defendant's hotel room? He sat on the bed and I sat on a chair. He asked about my family, who my dad's favorite teams were. Did I like football? Stuff like that. And then I told him I had to go to the bathroom. And when I came out, maybe he'd have that picture ready. But when I came out, he started kissing me. He grabbed me and I told him to stop. But he just picked me up and he tossed me on the bed. He jumped on me. And, and he kept saying, you don't want to fight me. Don't fight me now. <laughs> I know this is difficult, Shannon, but I need you to tell the court what happened next. He had sex with me, even though I was crying and saying no. No further questions at this time, Judge Gray. Ms. Notes. Ms. Elner, you testified that two of your friends told you not to go with Mr. Darby. So, why did you go? Objection, argumentative. Overruled. This is Cross, Mr. Matthews. You may answer, Ms. Elmer. He seemed nice. Can you describe for the jury what you wore for this innocent hotel visit? Objection. Defense is alleging consent, Your Honor, that Ms. Elner set out to seduce a defendant. I get it. Overruled. I don't remember what I wore. I, I think it was jeans and a tank top. No jacket? It was 40 degrees out. Jeans and a tank? You must have been frightfully cold, Miss Elner. Don't try my patience, Ms. Knox. Isn't it true that you smiled and waved at the doorman in the lobby when you left Mr. Darby's hotel at 2.30? Objection. Grounds? No, if he said that, he's lying. Miss Elner, if Mr. Darby did indeed rape you, why did you ask him to buy you a bracelet? I didn't. That's another lie. And I suppose you didn't confide to a friend that having sex with my client was the least work for the biggest payday. Objection, hearsay, argumentative. Sustained. All about the money is... Ms. Knox! It's not. You can ask any one of my friends. And what should I ask them? Whether or not you're a gold digger? I'm not. I don't care how rich and famous he is. I don't have sex with black guys. Ten minute recess. Council in my chambers now. Right now. All rise. My client was manipulated and goaded into that outburst. Yes, she was, Mr. Matthews, but it's your job to prevent that, not mine. Be a better lawyer. Judge Gray, due to Ms. Elner's assertion of her sexual preferences, her sexual history is now fair game. Yes, yes, they covered that in my law school as well. For the defense to call new witnesses, we need time to investigate, time to depose. No, I'm not going to sequester the jury and grant a long continuance, if that's where you're going, Mr. Matthews. You have until tomorrow morning, both of you. Any longer than that, and the coverage on this will make Cirque du Soleil look understated. We all know that. You're not going to waste my time talking about it. Your Honor, that is an unrealistic amount of time. And yet I'm going to go out on a limb and bet you'll be prepared, Ms. Knox. My mother doesn't like me to talk to people from the government. And I can certainly understand that. But I have a report you and your brother are having some problems. I can handle it. You shouldn't have to handle it. I notice you and your brother dress alike. So? Well, you dress alike, but you don't dress like any of the other students, which in uh, some neighborhoods could land a person on the wrong side of a fist. This is a microfiber. 
You can just wash it with water. You don't have to use laundry detergent. And that uh, saves money? They put stuff in laundry detergent that gives you cancer. Who does? You know, some of the big corporations. The ones that have been infiltrated by terrorists and extremist groups. Is that what your mother told you? My father had a website about all that stuff. And he was writing a book about it. That's why he got killed. I understood it was a car accident. They ran his car off the road. What's in the backpack? Survival stuff. Chemical mask for biological attack. Iodine pills for radiation. Mom says that kind of thing is going to happen sooner or later. She thinks the government knows what's going to happen. They're just keeping us in the dark. And what do you think? I think it keeps her from worrying so much and she can't be there to protect us. Even if none of it is true, why should she have to worry so much? If I had your job, I would never get any work done. Just imagine myself on, on that beach, the warm sand between my toes, and a, a little guy right there serving me a Mai Tai. You came to the right place. I can make all that happen for you. Well, you'll have to provide your own little guy. Here's my little guy right now. Uh, sorry I'm late. Stu, this is Marta. Hi. Did Amy tell you how difficult this is going to be? Oh, come on. You fell in love. You can't be that different. Let's start with the simple things. What kind of weather are you thinking about? Warm. I agree. See, we're off to a good start. Now, did you want an exotic vacation or something closer to home? Exotic. exotic. I thought you were having trouble. Well, this is where it's going to get a little rocky. <laughs> See, uh, Stu and I are at different places in our lives. Uh, I've been married, I have a child, and Stu, well, he was ill. Oh, I'm sorry. So nothing too strenuous. Well, I wish. No, oh, no, no, no. Uh, how do I put this, honey? Uh, he is um, reaffirming his existence by climbing up and swimming through everything in sight. <laughs> you see, Amy's a judge, and I think she's probably seen a little too much of what can go wrong in the world, so consequently she tends to be cautious. And, and what would you say, sweetie? Rigid? Stu, weddings are stressful, and we're going to want to sleep for days afterwards. Right, and we can sleep in the plane, and then we can wake up in Tanzania refreshed and ready for the Serengeti. Oh, so when you say exotic, you mean... Memorable, out of the ordinary. He means life-threatening. This. This is exotic. Ah. That? It would bore the hell out of me. You know, I read an article about this couple who took separate honeymoons. Of course, it didn't work out so well. Oh, what am I, what am I doing here? We had you brought in. Your son Gary has been in a bicycle accident and we needed you straight and sober to make some decisions. <clears throat> Is Gary all right? <clears throat> Tell me he's going to be all right. I'm sorry. Ms. Costin, your son did not survive his injuries. We have him on life support. Well, so, so he, he's alive. No, not, not really. We're keeping him alive on a machine. There's no good way of saying this, so I'm just going to say it. We need permission to use Gary's kidney to save another child's life. Your mother won't sign the papers until you say it's okay. You want to take your kidney? Is it okay? No. No. No, it's... No, it's not okay. Where's my mother? Miss Costin. Where, where is she? Miss Costin, is she, she's, she's, she's with Gary. She wants to talk to you. But they, they, they said he was supposed to be safe. That's, that's why the judge gave Gary to her. Because she was supposed to watch him. It was an accident. 
But she promised. She said nothing would happen to him. There is a girl who is going to die unless you give us permission. I don't care about your girl. The hell with your please, girl. Please, just talk to your mother. No, just get out. Just, just get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Where did you get this? I work for the government, Susan. I have access to all sorts of records most people don't get a chance to look at. I'm, I'm not supposed to share these, but sometimes I do, because I'm a mother like you, and I, I use these reports to protect my own children. So you know about the... The extremist groups? <laughs> and the corporations that have been infiltrated, yes, some of them. But the landscape is constantly changing. So by the time citizens like yourself get the information, it's outdated. What can I do? The, the clothes that, um, that you dress your sons in come from corporations that can no longer be trusted. How do you know that? Well, I've been at this a lot longer than you have. Now, I've brought you these things. I have your boys wear the clothes I've brought. And... Uh, have them put their gas masks into these unmarked backpacks. That way they'll be prepared, but they'll fit in at school and cease to draw unwanted attention. Okay. And, um, I'd like you to check in with me once a month. I mean, I, I know that you will stay vigilant and oh. look out for new threats, but I can help you sort out the rumors from the truth. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I just want to keep my boys safe. They're everything to me. I absolutely believe that. Where's my daughter? We couldn't keep her here. She insisted on leaving. Did you tell her where our boy is? Of course. Time is running out. If we are going to have a shot at that transplant, we need your signature. It's up to Eric. You are Gary's legal guardian. You have the power. I don't care what it says on a piece of paper. She gave birth to him. I'm not getting between a mother and her child. I've been there too much already. I would love for Erica to walk through that door right now sober and take responsibility for her son. But we both know that's not going to happen. The ship has sailed on your daughter, Mrs. Costin. But there's a little girl who has done nothing to deserve the state she's in, and you can save her. More apartment ads? No, restaurant for sale ads. How many restaurants do you need? I'm selling the diner and I am trying to educate myself as to what makes a restaurant irresistible to people who buy restaurants. You can't sell the diner. Why not? I sold my house. I'm fine with it, Amy. Is this Peter's idea? Could we discuss something more pleasant like ear mites? See, you're not fine with it. Or perhaps you'd like to tell me why Lauren pouted her way through dinner last night. Oh, she's afraid that after Stu and I get married, we might break up. She wanted me to promise that wouldn't happen. Did you promise? No, I hedged and evaded like any other self-respecting mother backed into a corner. Why didn't you tell her the truth? And what is the truth? That no one can make a promise like that. Our class is full of parents that made that promise and kept it. Well, they're either lucky or they're lying. If you had asked me six months ago to tell you what I would be doing today, combing through the classified would not be uh, on my list. You can't protect Lauren from life.
Ms. Elner, when you left Mr. Darby's hotel, did you go to the police? No. I just wanted to go home. And how soon after the alleged rape did you go to the hospital? Uh, um, two days. Ms. Elner, you made a statement yesterday that you wouldn't have sex with Jason Darby for any amount of money. Do you remember what you were doing in July 2001? No. Objection. Theatrical, Your Honor. Not a real objection, but uh, Ms. Knox, could we get to the point here? Do you know who Frank McGee is? Yes. We were roommates a couple of years ago. Would you stand up, please? Objection, Your Honor. What is this? His name's not on any witness list. Then let's call him an exhibit. Exhibit A. Let's not. Mr. McGee, would you please sit down or I'll have you removed from the courtroom? Was there a period of time, several months, when you were living with Frank McGee that you were broke? Objection. Where is this going, Your Honor? What do you think? Overruled. Didn't you have sex with Frank McGee in exchange for his covering the rent for a period of four months? Your Honor! Overruled. I must direct you to answer the question, Ms. Elner. Yes. I did. I'm not perfect. But that doesn't prove anything. Jason Darby raped me. I told him no, but he raped me. I swear to God. Encouraged by our victory. Jason Darby is a free man today because our system, flawed as it sometimes can be, still works. All we need are people who will stand up and demand justice. Jason, okay, so we'll take just a few questions. There's some trial you missed. I just want to thank my fans for standing by me, all the mail and the love you sent. And I want to thank this lady here for bringing her game. Man, she gave 110%. No lie. If you are ever in trouble, call her. She is something else. Yes, she is. You should congratulate her. Seriously, she put on a hell of a show. Tell me the truth. You think he did it? That's all for now. The truth. Doesn't matter what I think. years, 13, 14, 15. A lot can happen. You gotta make sure you watch them every minute. Find out who they're running with. Because when it turns, it turns. They seem like a very nice family. They are. Gary was a good boy. I know. Where are the papers? some good news.
Peter was supposed to meet us here. Oh, we could start without him. Now tell me, are we looking for a quick sale or can we be particular? Uh, I guess I need the money. But I do hope you'll find a buyer who wants to keep the place going. Oh, that's going to be tricky. This area, your best bet is to sell to a developer. I could see a Starbucks go up. They've got plenty of money. There's just not much of a market for old diners. What about them? Old diners. Never mind. Did you know my fiancé bought this place for me? Really? Well, I'm sure that he thought this was a good investment at the time. Oh, Peter told me about him. Jared Duff, right? I'm sorry. Me too. travel agents more often I got something for you two tickets to Hawaii a five-star resort on the beach 24-hour room service on a dangerous activity in sight it's 24-hour room service right you heard that that part right what's that New Zealand. A five-day whitewater river trip culminating in a bungee jump on the last day, sleeping out under the stars. That's what you bought? Yeah. I picked it up this morning. Look, we're, we're in this together, and where you go, I'll go, and if you need adventure, I'm not going to stand in your way. I don't. I was wrong. I don't need, I don't need bungee jumping or parasailing. I just need to be with you. You sure? Yeah. Of course, I've never been to New Zealand. Yeah, I bet it's lovely. We're going to Maui. Huh. Oh, sorry I'm late. Did you guys start? Sit down, Peter. Have some tea. Mom, where's she? Where's, where's the realtor? Where's Joyce? Joyce left. Why? Are you hungry? You look hungry. Oh, God, you're keeping the diner. Try the pumpkin pie. Why? Because it's in season, and Penny does something with the crust. Mom, I don't care about the pie. Why are you keeping the diner? We talked about this costing you money every day. If you're trying to save for a down payment on a house... I'm not ready. What? I like it here, Peter. I'm not ready to let it go. Penny, could you bring us a piece of pumpkin pie, please? Try saying that three times fast. All right. I'll take another look at your books, but I don't know how you're going to do it. You're a financial wizard. Do something financial. Oh, cheer up, Peter. Everything's going to be all right. We have pie. Do. 